So the Future Soldier Program, what this what it's about is we these guys and girls they come in, they enlist into the military, and they don't leave right away. You know, some of them they they're in they're seniors in high school, and they enlist into the military, and then they finish up their high school until they graduate. So they become a future soldier once they enlist in. We start to train them about the military, what to expect in basic training, what to expect in the job field that they chose, and just kind of prepare them just to help them to be more successful overall. This is First to Strike, the podcast of the United States Army Baton Rouge Recruiting Battalion. If you're considering serving in the United States Army and want to know more, this is the show for you. I'm Catherine O'Brien. This is Season 1, Episode 2. Future Soldiers is a program designed to help young people who have made the decision to enlist in the Army get ready. On this episode, we're going to get to hear from some students who are currently in the Future Soldiers program, find out firsthand what it's really like. We're also going to hear from some of the people assisting the students in the Future Soldier program. There are a couple surprises we have for you, so be sure to stick around to the end of the show. These interviews were recorded at the Red Stick Bowl. Let's hear some more from Staff Sergeant Alvin Kitt and learn about how Future Soldiers is all about success. So my name is Staff Sergeant Alvin Kitt, I'm currently a recruiter in Baton Rouge. It's a new environment, new world, okay? So the more information you can provide someone, they're going to be confident and competent in what they're doing. You know, it's unknown. Even as an adult, if there's something I'm unsure of or, you know, not quite understanding, it affects my confidence level. So for us dealing with the future soldiers, especially the younger ones, we're just trying to instill that into them and just to help them to be more successful overall. Mental, I think it's more so even so than physical. We didn't have the recruiters coming into the high school uh, doing the presentations. So one thing that we do now that you know I didn't have when I was in high school, they come in and they talk to us about the military. And it's not just, you know, join us and here's why. They're actually giving a, a life lesson. They're giving, they're giving you a path. They're giving you options, you know. So it's not just join us. They're saying, hey, life is waiting once you graduate. So sometimes it's just that those words, hearing it, you know, not from your teacher or not from an administrator or your parents. There's someone else giving you an option. And it's just that much more information that I think it it helps. And for me, graduating, I didn't, I went to college for a little bit, but it wasn't what I wanted to do at the time. So had I known of this option prior to graduating or hearing other options, I think it would have helped me out. And I would have joined a lot sooner, to be honest with you. It's a structured life. It's, you're probably going to do things, some things that you may not want to do. You're going to have to listen to commands. You're going to have to do what someone says. Uh, some people, no matter what we do, it's just not for them, and we understand that. Uh, we are looking for someone that is willing to, one, support the country and make a decision that I say is bigger than them. So you have to look beyond you as a person. And... You have to commit to something. You have to be willing to become a part of a family, a part of a team, and it's not an individual thing. So I feel this for someone that's, you know, you have to want it. It's not something we can make you say, hey, come join. It has to be something that we give you the information and you say it works for you and you see yourself being a part of this team. The Army is a great opportunity. Um, I think for some, and especially I can speak for Baton Rouge and the areas that I work in, some of these students, they don't have opportunities, and I think what we can provide them, uh, structure, you know, income, ability to travel, to see the world, to see something outside of here that some, some people that I've talked to, they've never been on an airplane or left the state of Louisiana for that fact. So I think the opportunities that the Army in particular can provide, it's, it's great. Uh, I know, speaking from experience, and just from the time I've been here and just kind of learning, uh, you know, this area and how it, this area works, the opportunities are, I think it w- more outweighs anything else that these, uh, some of these students will have. All right, so my name is Daniel Robinson. We're part of the Future Soldiers, and they told us to come, show out, and represent the Army. Chance Borders, uh, just coming to support, have friends playing in the game, representing the Army. That's great. Shout out. A couple months ago, I went to MEPS, and I took all my blood tests and did everything, swore into the Army and got a contract. 
uh, whenever I finish high school, I'll be able to go back and get that another contract written up, and I'll ship out to the Army. I have all my dates and everything already written down. Finish high school in May, uh, and I ship in June. Wow. I ship 10 days after graduation, May 29th. Well, I just thought, I knew I wanted the financial stability that it offered and, and the discipline. I, I know I can't go through college right now, but with the Army behind me, I can do anything. I've always just wanted to help somebody be a hero to somebody and this time at least fulfill my goal. A lot of my friends are kind of scared for me. They don't really understand like how the Army works. They think every person who enlists is just going to go out and shoot them up and have a crazy life. But the Army has, I think, 200 jobs. They can offer you anything, and you can do and be anything you want. It's just... uh, my mom wouldn't even bring me to the center. She wanted me to go to National Guard. She thought that if you go into the Army... If there's a war, you're the first ones out to go out and fight, but that's not true at all. There's so many opportunities for you. And what about future soldiers? Well, it's it's just like, it's not as hard as you thought. You learn so much. There's so much to learn. Uh, it's actually a lot of fun, too. Normally, it's just some push-ups, sit-ups, meeting new friends. You meet a lot of new people. Well, yeah, you guys you guys met each other. Definitely. <laughs> it's, it's just sharing like-minded, like, people are bringing like-minded people together to learn about the same things we go and we do like he was talking about just physical exercise we learn all the army drills and everything we need to know to be more successful in the army i've been on sports teams uh, a good bit of my life and, and when you go there you're trying to build a family you're trying to you know like cope with people and you know i, I don't know just ascend it's, it's hard to explain yeah everyone around you is making a commitment for the you know a portion of their life to either have a better life or to you know give it up so it's for this you can't just have a weak mindset and say i'm going to join the army because you just won't make it you have to believe in yourself that you build a bond with your team you become a team and so y'all all believe in each other your mindset's confident and you can do anything we have the right mindset and we want to be better so uh, I signed a six-year contract. I don't, I don't know if I'm going to stay the job that I picked, but if I do, they teach me how to work on planes, like helicopters, all kind of stuff. If I'm proficient enough, they'll teach me how to fly them. That's the pathways that are going to do me wonders outside of the Army if I don't decide to re-enlist. I mean, and it, you know, not to mention you, you have college, you have, you know, there's so many things that they can offer you to have a better future. There's military discounts, insurance, I mean, you name it, it's, it's there. I'm going to have a great background. I think it's going to work out pretty great in the future for me. That's great. I, I don't think that I would be here today or that I could have made a, a, a big decision like the Army without my family and my support system behind me. So I, I'm so thankful that I had the ability to have people that supported me in, no matter what I did. What about you? I, mean, I wouldn't, if a recruiter asks to come talk, like, if you want to go talk to a recruiter, it's the best thing to do. Even if you don't want to join, just listen to them. They have so much to, have so much to learn from. It's the best thing I've done. We'll call that pizza for breakfast. All right, sounds good. <laughs> I'm Hannah Collins. Well, I'm a senior in high school, and I decided to enlist in the Army because I've always loved the idea and I've known that I wanted to do Army since I was in seventh grade. My whole family was military, so I was pretty much raised with it. So I fell in love with it and here I am. Yes, I am here for Future Soldiers and I love it. It's a great experience. I've always loved volunteer work, so this really helps with that as well. Well, because this gives you like extra time to like I guess show what you're going to be doing later on and it gives you a little bit of experience on working with the Army. I always knew it was going to be demanding and have to know what you're doing and you have to be 100% focused because if not then it just won't do you any well because you have to be focused and military is definitely something that you have to have a heart for because it's not for everybody. Um, a lot of my friends are very supportive. Some of them I don't even think no because they really haven't like stayed in touch with me and stuff like that. Um, my parents are very supportive. Of course, my stepdad being ex-military is all for it. He just wants the best for me. My mom is kind of on the iffy, iffy side because she's like, I don't want you to do this, but I'm ready to stand by you and support you 100%. So kind of rocky with her, but 
We'll make it worth it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get there eventually, we'll right? There. We'll get there. <laughs> do you have a recruiter that has been helping you through this process? I do. Um, everyone at the Denham Springs recruiting office has been amazing in helping us um, get where we need to be or where we want to be. They told me about the college tuition and how they would like they'd help in all of that and help get me on the right road for college and they explained to me the different uh the different pathways that you could go you could go active duty or reserves um they pretty much laid that out all out all on the table for me and they just made it really easy to decide after that i could ask them anything and they'd give me a straight up answer and i loved that that's all i ever wanted was a straight up answer That was Daniel Robinson, Chance Borders, and Hannah Collins. All students, all future soldiers. We're going to take a little turn here, something a little different. Meet Staff Sergeant Ulysses Stewart, who's currently working with the future soldiers. Before working with the future soldiers, Staff Sergeant Stewart worked in religious affairs. You know I had to ask about that. So in his interview, you'll get, of course, more insight into the Future Soldiers program, but we're going to talk a little bit, too, about what the Army thinks about your spiritual life. I know, right? Here's Staff Sergeant Stewart. I couldn't see myself doing it when I was 17, 18 years old, but now, after experiencing it, wonderful. Staff Sergeant Ulysses Stewart, I am a chaplain's assistant, and I've been in the Army for 16 years, and I've been here about three months in Louisiana. I'm a detailed Army recruiter now. The Army basically has said, okay, you've been doing your job and doing a good job at it. We want you to go out and tell the, your story and the Army story to young Americans and convince them to join. Originally, I'm from Columbus, Mississippi. It's right next door. I think they call that East Baton Rouge, but yes. <laughs> Right We're neighbors. Now. The only difference is the mosquitoes here are very, very big and strong as opposed to my mosquitoes in Mississippi, so that takes some adapting to. <laughs> Military service, it's an honor. It is an absolute honor. Um, I actually joined right after September 11, when 9 11 took place. I was actually in basic training the following month in October, so about 29, 30 days later, I was in basic training. My initial um, reason why I signed up was to serve my country and to be able to go out and tell young people about that because there's different reasons why some people decide to join. Either way it goes, I mean, that conscious decision of actually saying, yes, I'm going to serve my country for X number of years, it's a wonderful thing. It actually is an opportunity. I see it as a springboard. A lot of times when I'm talking to young people, it's kind of eerie to see that they don't actually have a solid plan of success to get them where they want to go in life. They kind of have an idea, but they don't know what are they going to use as their springboard. Some use scholarships. Some use their parents. And others, the Army actually gives you that opportunity to be independent and be that springboard you need to get you to where you want to go in those next three or four years of your life. There's a lot of people that are available to help these young people get to where they want to go in that next step in life. You have uh, recruiters that actually sit down and talk about an actual life plan. What is your goal here? What is it that you want to do? And we show them how the Army, with its benefits, can actually help them achieve those goals. Some of them, their goals are set to like eight, eight years away. But with the Army, they can, get a, they can accomplish their goals with about three or four years of service. The number one question I hear from a lot of the young people that I talk about is, hey, are you going to go straight to war? That's not the case. As a enlistee into the United States Army, you're trained for combat. However, the Army's not going to stick a weapon in your hand and send you straight to war. Um, we have about 10 combat jobs out of the 150 that we have, and the other 140, they're for support. They're non-combat. And that's kind of like the first thing that a lot of young people ask me, like, am I going straight to war? No, I mean, there's a chance that you could deploy. There's a chance that you could be called up. However, when you do deploy, you're going to be doing that job that the Army has trained you to do. I mean, I served two years in Afghanistan um, as a chaplain assistant. Uh, my job was to safeguard the chaplain and to set up for services and check on our young men and women who are actually serving there, doing their job in Afghanistan to make sure that their religious support is taken care of, to make sure that they're in contact with their family, and to make sure in case they needed to talk with somebody in confidence, that's where I come in at because I'm like the eyes and ears for my chaplain to let them know, hey, our soldiers aren't doing so well here, or hey, our soldiers are doing very well on this side. 
the reason why the chaplain and the chaplain assistant exists to uh, make sure we ensure the free exercise of religion as guaranteed by the Constitution. We have the free exercise of religion. So in, whether you have a belief in a deity or not, uh, it doesn't matter. You still will get religious support. Um, those who are Christian, those who are Buddhist, those who are Muslim, it doesn't matter what your specific denomination may be, you will get religious support. As, as far as those who don't have like uh, care to be associated with a religion. You still get to talk with your chaplain. It doesn't necessarily have to be about religion, but we are there for those spiritual needs if that soldier uh, is in need of it. In my opinion, I believe religious support is very necessary and important because some people need something to hold on to that's a little bit greater than themselves. So that kind of gives them that peace, that kind of gives them that calm. A lot of them were raised in churches and temples and whatnot, and that kind of like helps them keeps that touchstone to mom, dad, grandma, whoever helped, you know, come bring them along. Those things are important. So that's why we exist to make sure that they continue those touchstones and continue to live that good life that their parents have tried to instill in them. Today we're here and you've been uh, involved heavily with the Future Soldiers. Can you tell us a little bit about that program? The Future Soldiers program, young men and women again who have given a commitment to say, yes, I'm going to serve my country and serve the United States Army. It is such a blessing, in my opinion, to be able to work with these young people. As a non-commissioned officer in the United States Army, I get to work with soldiers, female, male, and I get to teach them how to do their job, their basic um, skills of being a soldier. We're well, working with these young men and women who have not even gone to basic training yet. It is like so motivating, so inspiring, because their energy, they want to learn, they want to do these things, and my job is to just kind of stoke those fires and keep them going, keep them going, and they motivate me. That makes me happy. Thank you so much for being on the podcast. I was nervous about talking to you, but now I'm like, I'm like, hey, can I do this again? I think we should do this again for okay, sure. Cool, cool, cool. Thank you very much. Here we are at the end of the show. We do have one more special thing for you. But before that, if you would like to speak to someone about serving in the United States Army, there is a recruiter that would like to speak to you. All you have to do is call 1-888-550-ARMY. That's 1-888-550-2769. Or just go to GoArmy.com, and you can have a recruiter help you out right away. Is there something you'd like to hear on this podcast? Let us know, and maybe it can be a part of a future episode. This podcast is available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, through iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, or any place that you get podcasts. Thanks for listening. As we close out here on this episode of First to Strike, may we present to you a group of our future soldiers being sworn in. At this time, we will go ahead and have the future soldiers that are enlisting into the United States Army. This will be an official swear-in into the United States Army. Oh, 
We'd like to thank the new enlistees for their commitment and their time and their bravery to join the United States Army.